Hi guys, uh, welcome to the new episode of One Dojo and we aim at promoting the martial arts in India and apart from that just to keep you updated on the recent MMA events and today it's a big day because today only uh, we have seen the new edition of the first event or we can say the first event of UFC in of 2020 and uh, you, that's UFC 246 and I have with my friend Rahul in the studio just to keep you updated about the kind of fights and we're gonna analyze each fight uh, just to keep you updated on that right thank you Rohit so before I start with my reviews Rohit let me ask you how was the event how did you find UFC 246 to be as in our last episode I have already told you that uh, this fight card is a blast so same way it went and uh, I think the fights were also a blast the event was literally great well, if you ask me, the event was a blooper. I was expecting some fireworks, but then the first disappointment was when Alexa Gasso couldn't make weight and, <laughs> you know, that fight was cancelled. That the was the first... The beautiful fighters were... Exactly. Yeah. I, I love Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, this time it's going to be a disappointment for you. Yes, uh, well, it was disappointing. And, and uh, let's start with the main card. It was Conor McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone. Uh... I Before it, I... was, it was the biggest fight of the year which happened at the start of the year itself because uh, Cowboy Cerrone and Conor McGregor they both were looking you know uh, for this fight and uh, but the way fight was started I thought that Conor, Donald Cerrone is definitely gonna do something good but unfortunately um, the Conor did it uh, in his way so I think uh, yes uh, Cowboy Cerrone was knocked out in the first 40 seconds uh, it was a blooper for me I'm not saying it was fake but it was all scripted. This is what I think. It was all scripted. This is Conor McGregor's uh, return to, uh, to the octagon. And uh, just to keep the money mill running, I think this was all scripted. Now, what, what, what do you think? What's next for Conor McGregor? As Conor, Conor has already you know, decided and already declared that after the fight that he's going to stick to the welterweight division. And he's in shape according to the welterweight um, fighters. And definitely, I mean, he should be. I mean, he's going to stick with this... Uh, with this division and George Masvidal and Kumar Usman both were present over there so he was saying that anyone in the welterweight division if want to fight with Conor, Conor is always ready for that. If you ask me, it was a blooper again. I, I'm going to continue Absolutely. saying that it was a blooper. When we, when we talk about UFC, it's as real as it gets so definitely there is no blooper. Well, I think I, I still disagree. I think it was all scripted and you know to me, yes you said Usman was there. I was yawning the same way Usman was yawning. <laughs> I was anticipating fireworks, but it was a 40 second knockout. And I don't know how you can knock out somebody with just a, you know, movement of your shoulder. But anyhow, that's Conor McGregor. I think what's next for Conor McGregor is a lot of money coming in. He's got uh, Usman lined up and maybe Masvidal. Besides this, he's also uh, said that he would like to fight uh, in pro boxing once again, maybe with Mayweather or, May or uh, Manny Pacquiao. If he's going, again, going to the that way, then definitely it's not a good decision for him. Well, to me, after the fight, the, the octagon looked like a Thanksgiving uh, arena, wherein <laughs> there was a lot of hugs and kisses and thank yous. There wasn't any cussing. There was no challenging. There was no bad words. I, I, you know, this is not MMA for me. This is, of course, not Conor McGregor in UFC. Maybe this is a strange avatar, wherein he's trying to be more humble, more polite, a true martial artist like all of us. Uh, actually, he's a true martial artist. I mean, you can see after every fight, he used to, you know, just uh, say thanks to his opponents and all those things. But yes, I mean, initially, before the fight, the, the way he used to trash talk, this time he didn't do that. Maybe, um, Dominic Sivani is a kind of fighter who always said that he has already proved everything to himself. He doesn't need to prove anything else. So he's, Donald Cerrone is completely calm and completely, you know, just enjoying the sport. He never want to you know, get into this kind of trash, car, trash talks and no kind of, and there, there's no pressure he's going to take on him by on the basis of those kind of talks. So definitely, I think Conor already aware about this thing. So that's why, that may be the reason that Conor, uh, uh, I mean, he didn't say anything like that before the fight. Well, yes, Cowboy is a real cowboy. Uh, moving on to the other fight, which I really liked, was uh, Anthony Pettis versus Carlos Diego Ferreira. Uh, this was uh, Diego Ferreira's birthday today. So what a birthday surprise for him. <laughs> he submitted uh, Anthony Pettis as I predicted in the last video. He was actually dominating the fight um, and I thought that uh, he will take the fight very easily. But um, um, Anthony Pettis, we should not neglect the fact that he's also a BJJ black belt. He is a very good striker, but apart from that, he's a very good grappler as well. So I think uh, he just shown his skills and uh, this is what it is. I mean, 
uh, Anthony Pettis is also very much familiar with all kind of uh, locks and all, so that's the thing. But eventually, Anthony Pettis got submitted in the second round. So the next in UFC roster is Fight Night, which is happening on 26th. The main event features Junior Dos Santos. I think, Rohit, you look like Junior Dos Santos. <laughs> I am following Junior for a long time. You know, uh, uh, I used to uh, I used to be the fan of heavyweight division when uh, when this Kane Velasquez was leading the division at that point in time. So it was a uh, you know long long rivalry between Kane Velasquez and Junior Dos Santos at that point in time. Uh, Junior, I mean, he is very unpredictable fighter. He is a boxing as a background, but apart from that, he did uh, BJJ also very I mean to a very good level. So I think uh, I know George, uh, just, uh, George Junior Dos Santos is again, I mean, he's the guy who always eligible for the UFC title. So I think he's again going for the same thing. So whosoever is coming in front of him is going to give his best. Much respect to Junior Dos Santos. I like him too, but I still feel that Rohit looks like Junior Dos Santos. <laughs> and then the next event is UFC 247, wherein we see John Jones coming back to the octagon. I would say that John is the only fighter who is, you know, still maintaining his streak from a long period of time. All the fighters at that point in time, in 2011, 2012, they have lost their, lost their belts to the to some of some some other opponents. But John Jones is the only one who is still maintain, uh, still you know, sticking to the streak. And John is a great guy. You know, he's a tall guy, and he knows, I mean, what kind of skill he is holding. So he's just gonna fight on the skills. He never tried something, you know, new or something new or all those things. Uh, John Jones is John Jones. I mean. Yes, John Jones is one of the most successful UFC fighters we have ever seen. Thank you so much for watching this episode of One Dojo. We will continue bringing the best of combat sports from the country to you. And a big shout out to Kalsi Creations for helping us with the video and editing.